This tutorial is for the Structure-Based Evidence module. First I'm going to log in as a student, find my class, find my assignment, and I'll go to the lab notebook of this particular assignment where I have filled out basic information, sequence-based similarity data, cellular localization data, and alternative open reading frame information. I'm going to move on to the structure-based evidence module with uh, three components. Now, what's, as I go through these components, we'll comment a little bit about what we're doing. But again, the general theme is that we're going to go up here and get this particular protein. And within all of these letters, these amino acid letters, we're going to uh, be querying databases and within those databases hopefully there is something that is a similarity that will allow us to assign some sort of function to this particular amino acid sequence. So this first link is for something called Tiger Fam. It's going to look very basic and very simple. I'm going to start. It takes a long time. This one takes a long time so we're going to get it going and I'll talk about it. The Tiger Fam is a collection of protein families featuring curated multiple sequence alignments. Again, what that, what that means is that there are many similar protein sequences at the primary amino acid level that have been aligned based upon some sort of mathematical and statistical or probability theory algorithm. This alignment has been correlated to laboratory experiments and the laboratory experiment data has been cross-referenced into this information so that when there is a hit there is a, a putative role or job of that of that particular hit. Now when you see this output again this is a uh, this is a kind of a, of a, a, a searching a large database with your particular amino acids sequence. And in that particular case, we see uh, something called a score and an E value. Again, the E value, the smaller the number here, the better, the larger the number here, the better. And we get pretty much a pretty much clear cut breakdown uh, here where you get a very clear differentiation. So what are we going to need? We're going to be asked to put put the Tiger Fam number. Uh, what is the Tiger Fam number? That Tiger Fam number is right here. So we'll paste the Tiger Fam number in there. It looks kind of funny. And what is the Tiger Fam name? Well, it's cut off there, so I'm going to go down to the bottom, see if I can get more of it. And voila. I'm not getting more of it, so we'll just take this much of it then. So Tiger Fam, well, as you can see, was put together by the J. Craig Venture Institute. He was one of the, the individuals who, who pioneered the sequencing of the human genome. And he sort of left this database unattended for a long, a long, long time. And uh, here's what it looks like now. Um, it's not the prettiest thing. But it's a good place for us to go get some information that we can continue to collect to categorize and put a role into our gene. So I'm going to save that. That's all we're going to be asked to get from TigerFan. All right, now um, I need to go back up and get my protein sequence because I've filled my clipboard with other gobbledygook and I'm going to go back down to this uh, structure based similarity. We're going to go on to the next uh, search tool here, something called uh, PFAMs. So I'll submit that and again I'll briefly talk about these PFAMs which are also a collection of manually curated multiple sequence alignments from common protein families and domains. 
and again you can see a little image up here uh, if if this line this gray line represents the length of an amino acid sequence uh, the green rectangle and the red rectangle represent domains or regions within the protein or amino acid sequence that have significant homology to some particular role or job that has been characterized in previously studied proteins of this type. And this PFAM database is a, is a resource to plug your unknown amino acid sequence into it and to pull out some, some similarity information. So we're going to copy and paste that similarity information for two hits here, and we happen to have two hits. So again, PFAM number. So um, what is my PFAM number? We're going to go here and open up this and get this PFAM number right here, PFAM. Okay, so a little click to get to that link. And then what is my PFAM name? Uh, a, B, C underscore transport or ABC transporter. I'm going to type that one in there. And then we have something called a clan name. So this particular uh, tool um, will place things into clans. It's another sort of organizational scheme. Um, one issue here, as you see when I copy and paste, if, it, if you copy and paste something that is uh, colored, it comes out a little, a little odd sometimes, so we'll click on that link and open up that clan. And we'll wait for my computer here to spin and go and spin and go. that in a different tab stop that link oh that's not what I wanted to do that was not good I wonder if I can open that last tab recently closed tabs okay recovered right for the video all right while this thing is connecting let's go back and fill in some of the other stuff we need so we've got clan name we need a score we need an e-value and a pairwise alignment so I've got a score right here. I've got a bit score of 105, and I've got an E value of 3.5 times E to the minus 30. Once again, I'm going to remind you that with E value, the smaller the number is better, and with score, the higher the number is better. Oop, that was 105, wasn't it? So uh, the lower number... Uh, small number represents the probability that this alignment occurred by chance and as you approach zero the probability approaches zero so this didn't um, in fact occur by chance let's go back and get what we can get here for the pairwise alignment HMM logo and key functional residues in the meantime I've gotten my clan name here and I'm going to try and copy that and paste it into this box Ah uh, yes, beautiful, beautiful. So I just need a, I just need my pairwise alignment, which I can pull off right here by showing this alignment. If I can get this to work, which sometimes doesn't work, voila! That isn't the prettiest pairwise alignment. Ooh, pairwise alignment in the world. But you know, we have that little trick of going here into the font family and choosing courier and that will align it quite nicely okay I'm gonna save that one uh, HMM logo and key functional residues and then I will uh, wrap up this tutorial for these two parts of the module uh, Getting back over here to the family, I can click right here and I see the little HMM logo. You remember one of these. We copy this image and 
and paste the image right in there. Looks beautiful. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go up. Oop. What an awesome. Oh, what did I just do? Another reason to always save your work. Yes, it's been saved. Sweet. Key functional residues. So when you look at this HMM logo, and you're asked, what is a key functional residue? Let's look through and what we see is I see a G at 18, I see a G at 21, I see a G at 23. This logo is giving you an opportunity to examine protein function and conservation. So when we see these High, these conserved residues in these large database of functional proteins this is represented by a very large G that G is probably very important Wow this is cool there's a G at 112 oh look at that D that D is awesome a D at 133 so I'm gonna oh Oh. oh, okay. I now know what I'm doing, though. I didn't save that, and it's gone. Okay, so we're going to put G18, G21, G23, G11, 12, and D. This D down here was pretty awesome. Well, that's what I was doing. Save before I screw up again. D133. Alrighty. Alright, so I'm going to not do the next PFAM. And I'm going to call this the end of that particular tutorial wrapping up with the reminder that what you're doing is taking an amino acid sequence, putting that amino acid sequence into a, a database of an incredible amount of curated uh, multiple aligned sequences. Curated mean, means human beings constantly evaluate these and improve them day after day. That's the end.